Welcome to The Bean Pod. This is your place for all things stocks and crypto. From beginner tips to expert picks, use this as fuel for your investing journey. Because when you're in the know, your money will grow. All views expressed by speakers on The Bean Pod are solely their opinions. You should not treat any opinion expressed on The Bean Pod as a specific inducement to make a particular investment or follow a specific strategy, but only as an expression of their opinion. This podcast is for informational purposes only. The Bean Pod is presented by Dowmaker, the top crypto launchpad in the industry. Dowmaker allows people to participate in top crypto projects before they launch and generate some of the best returns you can find anywhere. They also provide growth solutions for crypto projects that are looking for funding and assistance with marketing. With their revolutionary new public strongholder offerings, everyone can get early access to top crypto projects regardless of their net worth. Dowmaker is rapidly disrupting the venture capital industry. If you're interested, head over to dowmaker.com to learn more. Welcome to the Bean Pod. This is Shane, aka the Jolly Green Investor. And this is Josh, the Nifty Investor. Today, we're going to be talking about insider stock trading. So we researched all the insider buys from the past week, and there's some heavy purchases going on on some of these companies. Could signal something to come. It's like when people, you know, they're in the company, they know what's happening. You really need to sift through it. But the the companies that we found and the, the volume and the money that's coming in from the company signals... You need, you need to be paying attention, right? That's right. So, you know, you're a retail investor. You got to wait for these new news articles to be released, the press releases to come out. This is the CEO. This is the CFO, the president. They know what's going on within their company. And you can actually track what these guys are doing, how many shares they're buying, how much they're buying. And some of these projects or companies, they're buying a lot of shares right now. Absolutely. It's, it's in the millions. And... <clears throat> Obviously, with the whole thing with insider trading, with you know senators trading, it's been a bit of a big issue this year. But this information is not well publicized. These are not. This is not being broadcasted on NBC and Fox. Who is buying these insider shares in real time? That's why this is a very important episode because we're going to tell you exactly what's going on, so you can kind of keep these companies on your watch list, right? Yeah, put them on your watch list. I did. I actually tried something like this earlier in the year on the Discord. You know, I found a project that was doing some insider buying. Sure enough. I think it did like a 50%, 60% gain over the next month or two. So it's a good strategy. Yeah, no, it's really interesting. And uh, we think you guys will get some good value out of this. For sure. All right. So uh, the first one I found when I looked at all the companies that are doing recently big buys, it was PayPal. Yeah. PayPal showed up big time. The president, the CEO, the board of directors, they're all buying lots of PayPal shares right now. And if you look at the stock chart for PayPal, it's been absolutely crushed. Mm. It's down from a high of 288 all the way down to 122. Yeah. So it's more than a 50% drawdown in the past like two months. I mean, they obviously know, I don't know maybe if they have a big partnership coming up or they just think the company's massively undervalued or undervalued right now. PayPal is, there's something going on there. So you know what I think with that, because I have that on my list as well, is that <clears throat> with all the talk about crypto recently, I think like some of the fiat payment systems like Square, uh, PayPal have taken a little bit of a tank lately. But because they're now integrating with crypto, I think they could start to see a turnaround. So for example, PayPal just formed a blockchain and digital currencies advisory council. Right. So now they're going to be attaching themselves to this super hypey space and could have some revenue pour in from a, you know alternative sector. Absolutely. And I also think the general hype that's coming around in crypto right now with all these sponsorships, it's going mainstream. People have to forget, don't, you know, don't think that fiat is going to be going away. No. A platform like PayPal, I'm using it every day. A platform like Square, I'm using it every day to buy things. So I think the hype is it's a little bit much. Fiat's not going anywhere. Mm. And as you said, not only are these companies integrating with crypto, they still have a very bright future. Personally, I don't love the user experience of PayPal the most. Uh, it's given me a lot of problems in the past, but it is everywhere. It's integrated into literally every single website that you buy things on. PayPal's not, I don't think it's going anywhere. I would have to agree that the, the stock is massively undervalued. That's probably why they're buying. Yeah, and I think one of the one of the ways of transferring your money out of Coinbase is to u- utilize PayPal as right. well. So, it's everywhere. Yeah, it's everywhere. What else you got? Um, <clears throat> so I find it pretty interesting that you know the summer is rolling around. So you start to look start to look into the future because once you know stocks are kind of priced in eight months in advance. Summer is going to be rolling around soon. It's still the middle of winter. So if we start to look to the summertime here. Uh, there's a really interesting company called Azek Co. <clears throat> the director just bought $500,000 worth of shares, okay. a, a 33% increase. 
And what it is, they manufacture, it's a manufacturer of environmentally friendly outdoor products. Oh, interesting. So everything is 100% recycled materials. I went on the website, looks super sharp. It's all like really fancy. You know, if you're out in Muskoka, buy the cottage, you know, big multi-million dollar houses. So in 2021, these guys saved 500 million pounds of waste being sent to landfills. I like it. You know, so I found that really interesting. Their net sales are up uh, to 1.2 billion, a 31% year over year increase. Damn, 1.2 billion. I've never even heard of this company. Yeah, that's what I mean. How's the stock chart look? It's looking It's looking like it's time to buy. Right. Yeah. Um, I think that's probably going to be a common theme with a lot of these companies we discussed today. They're they're undervalued. I mean, a lot of stocks right now are beaten down, but that doesn't necessarily mean the insiders are buying. It's a combination of being beaten down plus the insiders knowing there's good things coming, right? Yeah. So it's, you know, you're looking to sustainability. It's a great thing for the planet. That's jolly green. That's right. I like it. That's why I brought this up. I like it. And we're also leading to the summer months soon, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. keep this sure. one on your radar. Next one I had was Asana. Um, Asana had some insane insider buying. So Asana is a team management software platform. Uh, we use it every day to manage our tasks and our businesses. You can set meetings, all kinds of stuff. It's one of the best business management softwares there is for teams. Started by the co-founder of Facebook, Dustin Moskovitz. So you know in the Social Network movie, the other guy, his yep. friend, that's yep. he, he went on, left Facebook, got outed by Facebook, and started Asana. Their stock price is down from 140 to 60 in the last two months. So it was high flying, crushed. Over $1 billion worth of insider buying coming into this thing. Right. They know it's coming. Mm. It's a strong platform. I'm sure their users are exploding. They're probably going to be releasing more monetization options. This is just, you know, an opinion, but massive insider buying for Asana. This one was already on my watch list as a tech stock that I like because I use it every day. Yeah, we use that. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, a billion dollars of insider buying up 300% of ownership. That's significant. That is very Some, significant. Something's going on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of tech stocks have been beaten down too, right? For sure. So that could be an excellent play. Another one I have leading into the summer months again, you know, I, you want to get into these projects, these companies early, is Leslie's. Okay. <clears throat> the CEO just bought a million dollars worth. Right. One guy, a million bucks. Love it. What do they do? So this is the largest retailer of swimming pool supplies. Ah, uh, classic. Yeah, right? So they do maintenance, cleaning, you know, everything to do with pools. Summertime rolling around. To me, it's another smart play now before, you know. Interesting. So, yeah. so a play like that one and the last one you mentioned, that would probably be more of like a swing trade, right? Yeah. So you get it over the summer and then maybe, get it now and maybe then, it's all midsummer or something yes. as like the hype wears off on summer stocks, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I like that. Um, another really interesting one I had was Warby Parker, the online e-commerce retailer of sunglasses and glasses. Um, they were a, a recent IPO. I, I noticed a, a trend on a lot of these insider stock buys is, you know, when a, a company IPOs, typically they crash, right? And that's when the insiders come in. So Warby Parker IPO'd in October of last year, debuted around 53. It's all the way down to 34. Um, so now we have $250 million of insider buying coming in over the last few weeks. Right. So that would signal to me potentially a bottom is in, um, or again, they'd see the value of the company in the next five to 10 years. They think, wow. We've, we've crashed 50% from our IPO price. Now is the time that the CEO, the president, the board directors, they think this is a great time to buy. So now Warby Parker is on my watch list as well. Mm. It's always look interesting to watch that because the IPO, the, the comp this company will IPO and then there's a lockup period of their shares. So at some point it might be six months out, I think it is. And then, then all the insiders who weren't able to sell their shares earlier start to dump. And then once they flush out all their shares and you start to see a little bit of a swing back up, mm. excellent time to be scooping up, especially when these insiders are grabbing. Yeah, for sure. When, <laughs> when you see the insiders grabbing, the thing about when you look at a list like the insider buying and selling, um, insider selling can be deceiving because a lot of these sales are written into their contracts. So they have to sell a certain amount of shares every quarter or whatever. So a lot of the times on Twitter, you'll see someone say, oh, wow, this president just sold $250 million worth of shares but this was written into a contract five years ago, right? Mm. So it doesn't necessarily signal the direction of a company. Uh, but the insider buying, on the other hand, that's a whole other thing because they're doing this on their own volition most of the time. So there's something there's something going on there, yeah. for sure. Um, so an, one that, another one, this one seemed to be the, the most interesting to me. It's called Play Studios. It trades under the ticker MYPS. The CEO, director, um, CFO all bought 100 grand worth of shares recently. This is a free to play casual like mobile gaming software. Play to earn? <laughs> free to play. It's free to play. It is play to earn. 
but basically it's it's like they co- they partner with other companies and the the points that you earn in the game can be used in real life to then purchase products at their stores right okay so it's a really interesting concept uh looks like again speaking about the ipo share unlock uh, looks like it had the ipo share unlock it created a dip it's been consolidating for about eight months wow. and now it's starting to do that uptick with a bunch of insider buys um and I, I looked back over the past several months they've been buying for the past three months wow so consolidation for eight months you know past three months they've been buying just recently got another couple hundred k buys coming in um what do we have here we have earnings on the 24th to watch they smashed their q3 earnings okay so february 24th they got their fourth their q4 earnings to come out well, uh, maybe that's another reason insiders are buying before earnings right that would be one of the reasons they they all know they've smashed the last quarter or whatever the reporting quarter is and you know they're getting in at that time yeah. and then there's an earnings boost right so yeah. it's important to watch all these things where the where the company is when they ipo'd when the next earnings is, how they've done in their earnings previously, all these things can factor into why insiders are buying, right? Mm. Yeah. One last thing about this company that I found, found really interesting was they, they created this board game. It's on your phone. It's called New York, New York. And it's a virtual board game and it's the map of New York from 1930s. Okay. So it's an actual virtual map of it. And what do you do? So basically you just roll dice, you collect, you collect things around as you go, but then you can use the loyalty points that you create in the game and then use them in New York. It sounds it sounds so, so much like a crypto. Play yeah, I know. Game. I know. Why we need to make this crypto? That's great. <laughs> That's I why I was it. like, this company looks really what's cool. It, what's it called again? The company? It's Play Studios. Play Studios. M Y P S. M Y P S. All right, I'll check. Bottomed that out, out. Bunch of buying coming in, and it's kind of connected to crypto, but not right in a different sense. I like it. Another sector that I saw a lot of insider buying in was oil and gas drilling, um, and I think that kind of makes sense because oil prices are rising, gas prices are crazy you know, supply shortage, supply chain. These are all things that are, have been going on for the last year and many people predict to continue with inflation and everything. Um, so one of the companies that had a massive plus 250% ownership buy is called Independence Contact Contract Drilling, ICD. Um, and I just think it fit, fits, fits perfectly into basically the narrative where the world is going. Um, you know, when you look at this, the, the insider buying list, you can see the sectors, right? And it kind of makes sense. And there's another one I'm going to talk about after this. But what do you think about the whole oil and gas? I think you've talked about this before is the energy. We talked about this in a previous episode, oil, gas, and energy being a sneaky play for 2022. Yeah, <clears throat> specifically with the the unrest between Ukraine and right. Russia. You know, with Russia being one of the lar- second largest uh, exporter, and with especially when it comes to natural gas, mm. the two kind of go hand in hand. And if, you, if they start to, if Russia all of a sudden just decides to cut off a pipeline or... The U.S., I know Biden's been talking about potentially shutting down some pipelines to affect their economy. Once there's a shortage, price price skyrockets. Yeah, so maybe that's why these, you know, these insiders in the oil and gas industry are saying, look, this is very real. This could happen. I think it's worth buying at this point. Um, the chart is not like the other ones we've discussed where it has a big dip because oil and gas has kind of been a little bit different than tech stocks. Um, but yeah, this is definitely, it's on my watch list now, the yeah. whole, the whole sector. So my brother's doing a bit of day trading now. So he's constantly studying the markets <laughs> and he, he actually came over the other day and he mentioned, I think there was a, a rocket that went into the United Arab, Arab Emirates. Okay. Emirates or something yeah. like that. And he's like, man, watch for oil prices. He's like, I think they're going to start creeping up here. Um, and typically again, moving into the summer, there is oil tends to rise closer to the summer as well. Right. So, so it could be a seasonal play. It's a world events play. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, especially, you know, we've seen the Discord and just in Twitter in general, people just want these quick 10x stocks. Oil and gas stocks aren't necessarily the sexiest stocks around. People want quick growth tech, you know, software. But if it's going to make you money, it's going to make you money. So I think, you know, maybe look at the oil and gas and natural energy sector as a whole. There's insider buyings coming in. What that means, we don't know, but it's worth a look. So I hear lots of people in the oil industry saying, look, oil's not going anywhere. You need it for everything, transportation, manufacturing. But as the world attempts to go more green, I'm wondering, will oil continue to stick around? Like, do we have the technology to, to transfer away from it? I think it's going to take a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Very long time. Longer than many people expect. You know, we, we saw the, the green energy boom, the electric vehicle boom about a year ago in the stock market. And I think people finally realized, well, it's, it's a great idea. And obviously I'm all for it, but it's going to take a very, very long time to get the entire world off of oil. If never. Yeah. Especially. Apart. Yeah, that's true. What else you got? Um, What else do I have here? 
found a really interesting one. It was an FDA approval for a company called Cardio Cardiovascular Systems. Okay, so biotech. It's kind of like a biotech play, uh, but this this they got this FDA approval for something called Scorflex, and basically it's this balloon that opens up your arteries a bit and helps to clear out any plaque and whatnot. So I know people, yeah, the, my mind starts to go a little bit. I start to go down this rabbit hole. People have been sitting around during the pandemic right. and for the past two years. A lot of could, artery could, plaque building up. start to see some, you know, um, maybe their their jobs have been cut short. So they're eating out at shittier restaurants right. like McDonald's and whatnot. Could be an interesting, you might want to start looking into these cardiovascular type plays. Okay. I don't have any cardiovascular <laughs> plays on my list. <laughs> <laughs> the, but the, so the revenues decreased, but they got the FDA approval, and this. So when these guys are buying right now, it makes me wonder why are they buying now? What other FDA approvals do they have right. potentially coming down the pipeline? Interesting. You know, so they got the C- CEO, the CFO, and the director all buying fifty k worth of shares right mm. now. I think it's interesting to note when you're looking at the insider buying list. If you ever, you know, if you watch this episode and you want to go to your own research, you're going to see a ton of pharmaceutical and biotech stocks on there just as a whole. One reason being because there's just so many companies. There's so many biotech companies on the stock market. Um, But a lot of it is because, as Josh said, they have the potential FDA approval dates coming up where they're going to make the decision if their drug is legal or not ready to hit the market. So I think you're going to see a lot of insider buying from tons of these biotech companies almost as just like a hope that, their drug gets approved and then the share can skyrocket, right? Yeah, biotech stocks are very risky, oh, but yeah. they are very rewarding whenever an FDA approval hits. We've seen it with uh, some of the like MindMed and yeah. you know some of the mushroom stocks that we've talked about yep. in the past. As soon as soon as there's an approval, it tends to lift other stocks in that sector as well. And right. that's why I said maybe check out some other biotech company stocks. But on the flip side, yeah, if there's if a denial, miss, that's like a minus sixty percent oh, yeah. crush. Yeah, you want to have so, a stop loss put in there. It's the Wild West yeah. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a Wild West type of guy. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> uh, one one other sector that I saw a lot on the insider buying list, and I have two names to discuss here, is home mortgages, refinancing, and lending. So we have Loan Depot, LDI, which had their IPO last year at $30 down to $4. So it's been absolutely crushed. Hmm. $15 million of insider buying, over a 1,000% increase in ownership over the last couple of weeks. And then we have Penny Mac Financial Services, PFSI, a mortgage lending company with $500 million of insider buying. Okay, this is- 600% ownership. This is interesting. This gets me stoked. Yeah. <laughs> so what's going on here? Mortgages, lending, home financing, right? I know you got an opinion on this. I do, I do. Yeah. So I think we talked about this in a previous episode. Inflation just came in today at time of recording. I think it came in at like 7.6%. So- with inflation rising, interest rates are going to have to rise. They have to. Where are they going to hit them? Your mortgages. Your mortgages are going to go up, you know, a quarter of a percent, half a percent. These people are going to be stretched thin. What are we? What stocks are going up right now? Mortgage lending. Yep. Man, it makes so much freaking sense. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a sector that I'm going to be potentially allocating some of my portfolio to over the next little bit because, yeah, just from our previous conversation about this, We've talked about this multiple times. Now we're seeing the signs. The insiders are buying. The inflation is rising. I think it makes it makes perfect sense if you connect the dots, yeah. right? People are going to be stretched thin. Where, where are you going to get? So if let's say you own a property, it's worth a million dollars. Interest rates go up. You're currently, let's say your your mortgage is, you know, you're paying 800 grand at 1%. So you're paying 80 grand a year. And then let's say it goes up half a percent. Now you owe another... 40 grand on top of mm. what you are currently paying dude that's people are gonna need help yeah and the mortgage lending is gonna be a big 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 play 500 million dollars of insider buying plus 600 <laughs> percent ownership on pfsi that's significant the stock's down from 69 to 60 which isn't a massive dip but for a stable financial services company like that i think it is um, so I would say, look at the home mortgages, refinancing and lending sector. There's a lot of companies in that area, obviously. Um, but insider buying is coming in hot. I like the chart too. I mean, it's continuously on an upward trend. Yep. Right. But that was just, I think we just received the little dip we, we needed. Mm. Yeah. I think it's, it's something to look at for sure. And I mean, loan Depot, their IPO last year at 30, they're down to four. The stock, it's like a crypto launch, like absolutely crushed. What's the ticker? LDI. With $15 million of insider buying coming in now, 
Mm. <laughs> Look at that chart. That is ugly. Well, the good thing is that, I mean, you can't really go back further than February 2021. So it's, it hasn't been around for too long. That's the IPO, yeah. Yeah, exactly. They are also offering a, a dividends of 8%. Yeah. So that's passive income. That's half a percent higher than the inflation right now. So there you go. Great you place go. to park some money. Yeah. So that's that's an interesting one. I think that whole sector and Loan Depot and Penny Mac Financial Services definitely worth a look. Mm. You got anything else? Uh, I have one more. It is the director of Caterpillar. Oh yeah. Purchasing he's increased his position size by thirty four percent. This is an American Fortune one hundred. So this is more of a safer play. Mm. You know, construction will always be there. It's like one of the leading. Uh, sectors, industries in the U.S. Got to build. American 100 and world's largest construction equipment manufacturer. Uh, they offer 2% divs. They beat earnings in the previous four reports. 25 analysts have an average buy rating with a price target of 230, currently trading at 190 something. So right. bit of an increase there. And it, the, the chart is just always up. It's like, it looks like a safe, like you're, it's like buying Apple or Google. It is or, basically, yeah. you know, if you, and if you're going to take, you know, what's a portfolio with all the most, some of the most iconic American brands, you're going to have Apple, Nike, Coke, you know, Caterpillar, like John Deere. Those, those are the kind of brand Disney. That's like your, yeah. your cookie cutter portfolio. Right. So I think it's a good idea. The fact that insiders are buying on a big company like that is also a good sign. Yeah. And you, you got the infrastructure bill going through and so right. there's some catalysts there as well. It's always, and it's always again, construction season, baby. Rolling into the summer again. Yeah, yeah, seasonal right. play. Mm. I like it. Um, the last one I had was also kind of a seasonal play, also a post-COVID play, and also a tech stock that's been beaten down play. So I like this one. It's called Toast Inc. Uh, they're a cloud-based restaurant management software who recently IPO'd about six months ago. Um, so it's down from 63 at IPO to $27. $40 million came in over the last few weeks from insider buying. And if you think about it, it's restaurant management software, right? Restaurants have been crushed with COVID. Mm -hmm. But as COVID ends and restrictions lift, restaurants could see a huge boom as people return to restaurants. Right. Also, the tech sector being a tech stock as cloud management has been crushed. So I think the insiders are saying, look, we're undervalued. We're going to get tailwinds from our industry, which is people going back to restaurants. And the post IPO dip is potentially over. So this one kind of checks all three of my boxes. So I think Toast is definitely worth a look. It's down over 50% since the IPO. The money is flowing in from the insiders. People are going back to restaurants. And who doesn't love Toast? Love Toast. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So that's that's definitely kind of the rundown of the stuff I had. So, you know, you have the tech stocks, which are... The trend is basically post-IPO tech stocks. Tech stocks that have been crushed, which potentially still have tailwinds coming from the industry biotech fda biotech then you have um the oil and gas industry which is doing insider buying because of the reasons we said and then also i think the most interesting one to discuss is the mortgages and mm. home lending and financing because that just makes so much sense right now yeah i think yeah. people are gonna need a lot of help moving forward when the interest rates get hiked awesome well i think it's um it's a good thing that we're gonna be kind of we're gonna keep looking at these lists right yeah. we're gonna be keeping an eye on these lists any big insider buys we'll be posting in our discord which is linked in the comments and i think this is a pretty fun episode and it's gonna be an interesting experiment for us to see how these stocks do uh so we're gonna be getting continued to do this episode so if you like it subscribe and we can we can check you out for the next one yep make sure you guys tune into the next episode Ooh, that one that one's gonna be a banger